Hello Crossword Compilers. In this video, I'm going to show you some of the settings you can use if you want to make crosswords in different languages. So you can see here I've got an Italian puzzle. Now I could make this in the Italian, German or French or English version of the program. The only difference between the different languages of the program is which languages are default. But even in the English version, you can make puzzles in lots of different languages, or indeed you can make puzzles with mixed languages, say the grid in one language and the clues in another. So the first thing you'll notice here is that uh, some of the settings like horizontally along the top here are not what you'd have in an English puzzle. This would be a cross, and then down here you'd have down. Uh, so that setting is very easy to change. That's under clue properties. And you can just change here. So if I change this to a cross, then I would get an across appearing back here. And likewise, anywhere else that across and down would appear. There's also a language specifics tabs under clue properties. So this top setting allows you to change the alphabet. So quite often you won't need to change this. But if you want to make a pangrammatic puzzle or a coded puzzle, which uses every letter of the alphabet, this is where you set the alphabet so the program knows which letters you want to use in your particular language you're going to use in the grid. The other time when you might want to use this is exporting an interactive puzzle where there's an option to include the alphabet under the puzzle. For example, if you're making a grid in Russian and you're teaching people who don't have a Russian keyboard, it may be very convenient to have a Russian alphabet under the grid so they can easily click to enter the letters. You can change some other bits of language text here. Um, you don't normally need to change these unless you're making things with linked clues or doing fill-in puzzles uh, or linking clues for these two letters here as well, but you can change those um, if needed. Then there are various settings um, affecting word lists. So obviously if you make a puzzle using a French word list, then you'll get a French puzzle. Um, in the word list manager is where you can make your word lists. Um, there is a set of language words lists available as one of the optional sets you can get with crossword compilers. So for example, this French list is in the additional set of language word lists that I've installed here. But of course, you can make your own word list if you want to, clicking new. Uh, and of course, if you want to make a vocabulary puzzle just using a small number of thematic words, for example, to teach a lesson or something for that particular week, you can use the freeform vocabulary puzzle option and then just type in your words you want to use directly here and off you go and then you can write the clues. But let's go back to the word list manager. What settings might we want to change in the word list? Well, the key thing that's slightly different in some different languages is the treatment of accents. And you might also want to do that differently if you're teaching a, a, a language. For example, you might want to make it in the puzzle that a and a grave are treated as separate letters, or you might want them both to appear uppercase and equivalent. So the way Crossword Compiler handles whether or not you regard different accents as equivalent is by the equivalent letter setting. So to see that, you select the word list, go to word list menu, and then equivalent letters. So here you can see that for French, all the different accents of A are set to be the same, and in the grid, they're all going to appear with the capital letter A. Likewise, for E, grave and acute accents and all the others are all mapped to the uppercase letter E. So this is very common in West European languages. In the grids in puzzles, uh, typically accents are not distinguished. Everything is just changed uppercase without an accent. So, for example, you can, ex you can have an A acute, an E acute on an across, and an E grave on a down, that would be perfectly acceptable because they both appear in the, as the letter E. But in uh, Scandinavian puzzles, for example, you might want this letter to be different from A, in which case you wouldn't want to map it into A. So there's some default setting at the bottom here, so you can put map all letters to uppercase. So here you can see that for the standard Latin alphabet, they're just mapping to uppercase, but then the accents are also mapped just to the uppercase. So here, you'd have up, accented uppercase letters in the grid, which are all distinct. So here you wouldn't be allowed to intersect different accents. So that could be used for Scandinavian languages, or you might want to do it also for language teaching puzzles to make sure your uh, students are using exactly the right accents. You can even use lowercase in the grid if you want to. If you deleted all of these settings here, 
then even uppercase and lowercase would be distinct. For example, if you wanted to teach German and make sure that people got the umleute and the capitalization of nouns all self-consistent everywhere, then you could uh, have no equivalence. Of course, it might become harder to create a grid, but it gives you a few options for intersecting things if the accents and the case all have to map exactly. Another thing that might be useful is the character set. So Crossword Compiler uh, supports Unicode, so that allows you to use um, any standard characters in the Unicode character set. In the grid, you can use any single character Unicode. So if you select Unicode as the character set, that will automatically support any languages you want to. Uh, for mainly historical reasons, it also supports individual uh, common character sets. So West European here is perfectly um, fine for most West European in English uh, languages and several others as well. Obviously, if you're going to use Russian or other Cyrillic land, you'd use Cyrillic. Or you can do all those just by selecting Unicode. Of course, when you import and export a list, you'd also want to make sure you've got the character set consistent. So make sure when you save a word list in another program, if you want to import it, uh, you're saving it in the right character set. So obviously Unicode is the simplest because it's most unambiguous and you can just import it as Unicode and everything will be fine. And the accents will all be in the right place. Another thing related to equivalent letters uh, would have happened in uh, writing clues uh, for the clue database. So for the clue database manager, normally when you look up a clue, uh, the word is matched uh, in a case insensitive way, in a similar way to the equivalent letters for a word list. But if, for example, you're doing a Scandinavian puzzle, you might want to go to the menu button here and select index setting. And here you can again change the setting on the indexing in the clue database, whether or not you want uppercase and all access distinct or what you'd normally have for a French puzzle, uppercase, accents, all equivalent. Or you can make it case sensitive as you prefer. So that pretty much covers what you need for filling grids. You can just go and fill your grids with the settings you've set up, write the clues in the clue in exactly the same way as you would for an English puzzle. Um, only other things you might want to change are when you're exporting. So if you set the across and down, of course, that will be appear when you print the puzzle automatically, so that will be self-consistent anyway. There are a few more language options if you want to export to the web. So if we go to web export publish to the web, there are some extra settings for the applet that you might want to change. For example, if you're including buttons in the solving applet to allow people to uh, reveal letters and things. So to say, change those to different languages, you go to applet options and then under buttons you can here change the text on all of the buttons so you can translate these to whichever language you like. There's also the message here that you can change so any of the settings that you might want to change in English you can also obviously change to a different language uh, if you want to. So for the what the program supports, the grid here supports um, any single Unicode letter. Uh, if you want to put something more complicated, you can do, you can go to square properties and go to display letters. So here you can put multiple letters. So if I wanted to, I could have MMM, but that also allows me the flexibility to put in a multi-character Chinese character or something, for example, if I wanted to is here. What you can't then do is automatically fill the grid using multi-character symbols in a single cell. But you, you can insert them manually so they will appear consistently in the grid here. For clues, you can use whatever characters you like and just write away. So if you want to write clues fully in Chinese using as many multi-symbol uh, characters as you wish, that's absolutely fine. Uh, for the grid, it's better to keep things fairly simple with standard Western or single character things uh, most of the time. But if necessary, you can use the display letters here to implement to do multiple letters or more complicated compound characters that aren't contained in a single Unicode symbol. Uh, so I think that's about it for the languages settings. Um, if you need any more help, of course, you can go to the help and read the contents and search for things, or you can press F1 at any time using the program. Um, so good luck with making your own puzzles in lots of different languages.